welcome you all to vtu e shikshana program today let us look at lecture 2 okay i am dr shri lakshmi from rv college of engineering who is going to teach you module 1 of 18 ec 63 microwaves and antenna course okay in the previous lecture we have seen why the conventional vacuum tubes cannot be used as they are in the microwave domain okay it is because of the two effects the inter-electrode capacitance and lead inductance and also transit time effects. And we also saw one more concept called as velocity modulation of electrons, isn't it? Using a re-entrant cavity. Now let us look at the tube which is going to use this and work at microwave frequencies. Okay. It is not a simple vacuum triode what I showed you in the diagram in the previous uh, lecture. It is a modified tube which is called as reflex klystron oscillator. Okay. Next module sorry in the next lecture that is lecture 3 I have dealt in detail about the classification of microwave devices. Okay. So microwave devices are going to be classified into semiconductor devices and also vacuum tubes okay so before i tell you that as you see here the module one has two portions one is the introduction to microwave tubes which we covered in lecture one and today i am going to take you through reflex klystron oscillator mechanism of oscillations modes of oscillations and mode curves okay so this lecture content is taken from the book the first textbook Das and Das Microwave Engineering and in the third uh, lecture which you are going to see we have the classification of microwave devices and microwave systems. For some clarity on reflex klystron oscillator where it stands I am going to just repeat this classification the details of which you can see in the third lecture fine. Now. The objectives of this lecture as I told you are to study the construction, working and modes of operation of a vacuum tube reflex klystron oscillator. Fine. So now before we take up this reflex klystron oscillator, I want to tell you a bit of classification of microwave devices. See as we know that microwaves are a special set of frequencies because of their very special properties they bring in lot of changes in the device behavior so whatever diodes uh, transistors fets and other vacuum tubes which were suitable for low frequency domain that is in the kilohertz and megahertz domain is not suitable as they are in the microwave domain okay see because the microwaves will have very small in the millimeter range uh, lambda that is the wavelength which is comparable to the device dimensions. So this brings in lot of changes in the device behavior because of which we have a separate set of devices for microwave domain. See these devices were initially vacuum tubes okay and then as the semiconductor research progressed and we got good semiconductors like gallium arsenide, gallium nitride silicon carbide and many other materials newer materials these semiconductor diodes and transistors and FETs they also started giving us high powers okay but then semiconductor devices are in no way comparable to the microwave tubes in the power generation capability even today okay so vacuum tubes though they are obsolete in the low frequency domain are prevalent in the microwave domain still okay so we have two classes of devices in the microwave domain one based on the vacuum tubes other one based on the semiconductor pn junctions right so in the vacuum tubes we have linear tubes and also circular magnetrons and circular or m type tubes so we have o type tubes and we have m type tubes and in semiconductor devices there is a big list of classification which we are going to do see in the next lecture. So in the vacuum tube domain 
we have L type tubes or O type and then M type tubes. Okay. One in the L type tubes, the in the functioning of the devices, the microwave vacuum tubes, we use both magnetic field as well as electric field. Okay. When magnetic field and electric field are aligned in the same direction as the moment of electrons, then they are called as L type tubes. So this reflex klystron is one such tube. Okay, all these are aligned along the axis of the tube. Okay, then if the fields are aligned in perpendicular to the axis of the tube, we call them as M type tubes. See, as it is, vacuum tubes are there for high power generation. Even within that, the M type tubes are very high power generators. Okay. One example under M type tube is the magnetron oscillator which you use in your microwave ovens in the house. Okay. So unfortunately or fortunately this is not included in your curriculum. So we are going to see one representative of the L type tube which is the reflex klystron oscillator. Okay. So coming to the klystron oscillator itself. So it has three words in this in its name one is the reflex other one is klystron and the third one is oscillator okay see any tube or any device should function either as an amplifier or as an oscillator basically and all our switches basically so this tube what we are studying we are studying its oscillator configuration there is also a multi cavity klystron amplifier is there okay so we are not studying that. We are studying only reflex klystron oscillator. Oscillator is a generator. You all know that. And you all know that oscillator does not take any input signal. It is just going to produce a signal. Taking the DC input, converts it into an AC and then gives out a high power signal. Okay. So the same principle is used here also. So there is no input AC signal in this reflex klystron oscillator. It's only the noise that gets amplified and finally gets converted into steady oscillations. We are going to see how it works. You also have a term reflex. Why it is reflex? Because the electron beam, unlike in the three tube, uh, three electron tube, it is not collected. It is repelled back into the cavity itself. That is why it is called as reflex klystron oscillator. Okay. So now let us look at the construction of this oscillator. Okay. So the reflex klystron oscillator is basically a vacuum tube. It has an electron gun structure and it has a reentrant cavity okay so now we have defined all these terms in the previous lecture so look at this diagram so this is the cross section of a reflex klystron oscillator it is a vacuum tube because the entire structure is housed in a glass tube okay which is evacuated that means there are no gases inside it is all vacuum that is created inside the glass tube it is sealed okay Next, it has a gun structure. I told you electron gun should have basically a cathode. Look here. This is an indirectly heated cathode represented by K. Okay. Then it has one or two grids which perform the functioning of base in a transistor. They are for control purpose. Okay. And the grids are all perforated. That means there is mesh structure. It is not a solid plate. So look here, there is an accelerating grid which is mentioned here which is closer to the cathode and it is connected to a small positive charge. Look at the battery here. Then you have the re-entrant cavity. Look at its shape. Isn't it shaped like the E shape or C shape what I showed you in the previous lecture? It is a re-entrant cavity. Its cut section only is shown. See, this is the cavity gap. Okay which is again perforated. Okay, it's a mesh structure. It is not a solid line. Then you have the 
repeller in place of collector or anode okay so that is why it is called reflex klystron oscillator and this repeller is given a very high negative potential so what will be its function its function is to repel the electron beam not collect it fine so cathode is going to generate lot of electrons because it is indirectly heated by a filament which is not shown here okay as the filament temperature increases this material on the cathode which is coated is going to release lot of electrons into the space so because this is given a very small positive potential the accelerating grid is going to pull all the electrons from the cathode okay then accelerate them towards the reentrant cavity and then this reentrant cavity also has a small positive potential and it has a overlapping alternating field this i have told you in the previous class okay then this is going to do the modulation job for the electron beam and then the beam is going to come here into the repeller space this repeller is going to repel it back into the grid space again okay so then the grid is going to absorb them back and send them to the cathode this is how the construction of the electron sorry reflex klystron oscillator is there so let me repeat the reflex klystron oscillator has a electron gun structure a reentrant cavity both housed in a evacuated glass chamber fine and then all the electrodes within the electron gun are biased with either positive or negative potential depending on their functionality fine so now let us move on to its working how the uh, tube works this is what is given here and then look at this here in this diagram i have shown you only the required portion of the klystron oscillator tube fine i have not shown any enclosures and other things see here is the electron gun having the cathode which is heated by a filament look here this symbol indicates the filament then it is connected to a negative supply then you have an accelerated grid connected to a small positive supply here you have a potentiometer varying this is going to vary the potential on the accelerating grid then these arrows indicate the three set of electrons which are coming up which i am going to tell you this is the beam actually electron beam here is the reentrant cavity and then here is the repeller which is connected to a very high negative potential okay so now all the remaining portions of the batteries are all grounded now you also have in the output cavity that is the reentrant cavity a small portion which is indicated as rf output so this portion is there to tap the oscillations out see we have to take the generated signal out of the tube isn't it how do we take it out from the reentrant cavity look here there is a small coaxial cable i hope all of you know what a coaxial cable is see you all have seen your tv cables isn't it that is called a coaxial cable it will have a small center conductor and a outer conductor and then the center conductor is to will be connected to this wall and through that the generated oscillations are tapped out of the cavity fine so this is how it is set up now let us look at how the reflex klystron works okay see you all have to recollect what is electron modulation for this to understand the working of the reflex klystron i'll tell you in brief what is velocity modulation see whenever in for velocity modulation there are two things which are very important one is we need to have a reentrant cavity with grid structure it should have a bias on it then it should be a resonant cavity so that small amount of resonance which is leading to some small rf noise is present in the cavity gap creating a alternating electric field within the gap okay this is a must then for the electrons which are passing through this at the 
zero crossing of this alternating electric field the velocity of the electron entering the grid is going to be not affected because there is zero field at that instant the electron is going to pass just like that for an electron which is going to be coming at its positive cycle it will be accelerated so it will move faster than what it entered the grid with then for an electron which is going to come at its negative going cycle the electron will be decelerated so it will be reduced in speed so it is going to go slower out of the grid okay and the result of this is what the result of this is bunching of electrons okay now let us start so now with the cathode biased with negative and heated it is going to give out a beam of highly accelerated negative electrons okay so the electron beam is accelerated attracted and accelerated because this is positive bias isn't it so electrons are pulled and through the meshes the electrons are accelerated above okay that is the job of this grid so now all electrons are moving at the same speed you see the arrows and the lines they are all straight lines now look at the cavity the cavity is having an alternating sine wave kind of a electric field on it okay why i have taken sine wave is that is the simplest signal to understand and it is the rf signal that is a high frequency signal so now this is let us consider three electrons electron a electron b and electron c right see electron b is going through the cavity when the signal there is crossing zero so that you can take it as a reference electron electron a is crossing the cavity when the signal there is going positive so it is highly accelerated in between a and b also there are electrons coming up which we have not shown so all of them are accelerated because the signal there is going positive now consider electron c that is entering the cavity when the signal there is going highly negative so it is highly decelerated slowed down there are electrons between b and c also which are crossing the cavity all of them are slowed down okay because the signal there is going negative okay this happens once per cycle and all of them go into the repeller space see this distance between the repeller and the grid the reentrant cavity space is called as repeller space which is of length l okay so they enter this repeller space and there are bunches in the electron beam i have told you this is due to the effect of velocity modulation so the bunching bunched electrons are trying to go towards the repeller because they are pushed from here no because of all this positive and negative charges so it is going to go near the repeller but look at what is the repeller voltage repeller voltage is highly negative electron beam and the bunches are also negatively charged you all know that so negative repeller is going to push them back towards the cavity because it's a closed cavity and when they are pushed back they have to come back to the cavity only they cannot go here and there and also i told you there is a magnetic field which is on either side of this there are electromagnets kept which i am not shown here so that magnetic field is used for focusing the beam what is focusing keeping together all the electrons in the single streamline motion okay that is the job of the magnetic field so this magnetic field is going to avoid the beams from scattering here and there so they have to come back to the repeller space itself right so now the repeller space the construction of the tube the voltages on various electrodes are all adjusted in such a way please remember this they are all adjusted in such a way that when the beam comes back or whenever electron bunches come back to the uh, grid or the reentrant cavity 
the electric field there will be going negative. Please remember this point. See, when the electric field is going negative, when a high speed electron bunch comes back, all the kinetic energy, the energy which is there in that electron beam is all absorbed by the field. Okay. So, the field is in the mode of absorbing energy. See, when the field is going positive, it will be in the form of giving energy. When it is going negative, the mode is to absorb energy. That is why it is going to decelerate the electrons in the first instance. Okay. So, when the beam is coming back, when the field is going negative, what happens is all the energy that is there present in the beam is all absorbed into the electric field. So, what happens to the beam? After losing energy, it is going to get completely decelerated. It will not have any other uh, energy to move forward. So, it will be absorbed by the walls of the cavity. You see here, what is the polarity on the wall? It is positive. Okay. So, electrons are negative. They don't have any energy. So, they fall on the cavity. So, they are absorbed. Now, what will happen to the field inside the cavity? It has absorbed a lot of energy, isn't it? Initially, its amplitude was very small because it is only due to a small noise that is present in the cavity gap. Is it not? Now, the field gets pronounced. That means its amplitude gets increased. So, now, with for the next coming bunches, the succeeding coming bunches will have this modulation more and more effectively because the field is now bigger. Isn't it? Again, this more and more is going to come back and then their more energy is taken back by the field. So, the electric field again grows. So, this process cumulatively increases and finally, for the given set of voltages and for the given dimensions of the tube, the field is going to attain some maximum power value and it resonates at the frequency of the cavity. Okay. I told you it is a resonant cavity which will have a distributed L and C into it. So, the frequency is proportional to that L and C, inversely proportional. F is equal to 1 over root LC. Okay. So, this is how a study set of oscillations are generated inside the cavity. How are they tapped out? They are tapped out using this coaxial cable. Okay. So, now this is how oscillations are generated. So, let me repeat again in a brief way. So, the bunches, oh, sorry, electron beam is released from the cathode. Okay. Then what happens? It is going to cross the gap of the repeller cavity. Because of the potential there, alternating potential, velocity modulation happens for the beam. It gets bunched then enters the repeller space. There what happens? Because of the negative potential, they are rippled back. So, they enter back the cavity. When do they enter? They enter when the field there in the cavity is going negative. Why it should enter that position? Because the energy has to be absorbed. That is how it is designed. If you do not allow the energy to be absorbed, what will happen? They are going to bombard the cavity. Some of them get absorbed. Some of them get come out. What will happen to the field? The field remains as they are. No oscillations, no steady state increase. So, they come back, strengthen this field, get absorbed by the cavity, wall and then go back. Resulting field gets steadily increased in amplitude and finally it reaches a steady state. Okay. And that is how the oscillations are built up. Fine. So, this is the working of the klystron as an oscillator. Why we call it an oscillator? Because we are only look here. In the whole of this setup, there is no any AC input to the cavity. Nowhere we have used any input, isn't it? It's only RF output we are taking. There is no RF input. So, the entire DC energy is getting converted to RF output. That is why it is called as an oscillator. Fine. So, the next thing that we have to see is what are the various modes in which the klystron oscillates and why these modes come up. Fine. Okay. So, this is what I have told you in 
short here. See, whenever you are asked to explain the klystron oscillator working, please also include the re-entrant cavity diagram what I showed in the first lecture, the velocity modulation explanation and then you start with the klystron working. Okay? You could also tell about the gun structure and other things what I have told you. So, whenever you are asked to write about the klystron oscillator, you uh, divide your explanation into three portions. One as construction, other one as working. Within working, you say velocity modulation, bunching and then oscillations. Then go for modes, which I am going to explain now. Followed? Okay. So, look at this diagram. This is a blown up diagram of what I showed you as part of the previous diagram. Okay. So, see here, this portion is what I have shown in a bigger form there to explain the modes. Okay. Now, see in a given cycle of the RF, see this complete thing is a one cycle and the time period of the cycle is T. Okay. And I have also shown a small time period T0 here. Okay. So, this T0 is the time period for the reference electron B to come back to the cavity. Okay. So, this is distance from the cavity gap. That is L whatever I showed you know the repeller space that is the one. This is the cavity grid voltage. Okay. And this is time axis. So now this T naught is equal to n times into T. Okay. If you see here, this T naught is n times into T. This is 1, this is 2, this is 1, 3, 4. Let us see what it is. Okay. See, T is the time period of the resonant frequency of the cavity. T naught is the time for reference electron B to enter the cavity back travel in the repeller space and travel back to cavity okay and capital n is the mode of oscillation okay small n is the mode number 0 1 2 3 then you can say t naught is equal to small n plus 3 by 4 into t which is called n into t okay by adjusting the repeller voltage bunching can happen at every n plus 3 by 4 positive half cycle what is the meaning? See, we want the thing to electron to be bunched and then the bunch should go back to the cavity, isn't it? In order to release its energy to the cavity. So, that can be controlled by the repeller voltage. Which is what is going to give the reflex isotron oscillator different modes to function. Okay. So, the modes can be 3 fourth mode when small n is 0, which is the first mode. See, that mode comes up when the repeller voltage is very, very low. Okay. Then, the higher modes, that is this first mode, second mode, third mode, they are going to have higher out, low power output compared to the higher voltage modes, which I am going to show you in the next mode curves. Okay. So, now did you understand? What are modes of reflex, uh, reflex klystron? Modes are the oscillations which happens at different values of repeller voltage. Okay. So, in the lab, if you have a klystron oscillator set up and a bench, microwave bench, you can go on increasing the repeller voltage and reducing it and then you can draw the mode curves. I hope you all practice this in the lab, the drawing of mode curves. Okay. So, now... Look at this. If you actually take readings and plot it on the graph, you get these mode curves. Okay. If you conduct the experiment and then plot it. See here, this is the repeller voltage which is in the negative x direction. Why negative x? Because repeller voltage is negative. It's minus Vr, isn't it? So, we start from highest voltage and then we go on to lower voltages. Okay. Lower in the sense minus lower. Okay. So, now you are here initially. Initially, this is the 0th mode I am not shown because in the 0th when small n equal to 0, 
the bunching is not completely effective okay so you get very low power output and then it's not effective so you have mode 1 3 fourth when small n equal to 1 n plus 3 by 4 into t is our mode isn't it so 1 plus 3 by 4 is 1 3 by 4 so you see this is a very good mode with a high power output then corresponding frequencies also you can plot and then you can take these values so the next mode when n equal to 2 small n equal to 2 you get capital n as 2 3 by 4 mode and then 3 3 by 4 mode and rest of the modes are going to die down because the uh, repeller voltage cannot be taken below a certain value why because see repeller is negative potential and you have a very high energy beam coming towards the repeller isn't it if you try to not keep sufficient negative potential what will happen the beam is going to come and hit the repeller electrode okay because of the very high velocity the repeller electrode is going to get spoiled within no time okay so you need to always main, maintain a small repeller voltage always on the tube so that limitation is going to limit the number of modes that we see here on the mode curves fine so depending on the power requirement you can have a mode, mode number one two or three fine and then you can tune the frequency of the oscillator within the small range okay from this value f1 to this value f2 okay so this f2 minus f1 is called as tuning range of electron okay it is called etr electronic tuning range and that divided by the corresponding vr voltage this we call it as electronic tuning sensitivity etr and ets okay this also you can calculate in the lab fine so if you know these things then you can set up the reflex klystron oscillator to work in any frequency range within this range and also in the power because for the rest of the applications you are going to use reflex klystron oscillator as a source of microwaves fine so you should know at what power it is oscillating and at what frequency it is oscillating right so if you set it up then you can use it for in the lab you can use the reflex klystron oscillator as a source for doing various other passive component experiments fine so i think with this uh, we close the lecture too and then i hope you have understood the functioning to summarize in this lecture we saw the reflex klystron oscillator construction working and mode curves okay thank you all